Have you ever saw someone's hair and thought, man, I really wish I had that? Or have you ever watched a superhero movie and said, man, I wish I could do that? In this video, I'm going to show you how you can, as long as you're a bacteria. For as long as there have been genes, there have been different methods to get those genes moved from one organism to another. Our focus in this video is going to be horizontal gene transfer, but I want to talk about vertical gene transfer for a moment. But let me show you an example of vertical gene transfer. So vertical gene transfer is how genes are going to be passed from one organism to another with reproduction. So here we have myself and my beautiful wife Liz and we mix and match genes when we create offspring and here we have Oliver, my son. So that's an example of vertical gene transfer, how organisms are able to mix and match genes which allows for adaptation and evolution from generation to generation. But bacteria are different because they do that when they reproduce through binary fission, but they also can evolve in their lifetime using horizontal gene transfer. So let me show you some key examples here of horizontal gene transfer. So the three main ones that I think of, and we'll cover a fourth, are transformation, transduction, and conjugation. So just step back and imagine for a second, or think about for a second, what this means. They're able to pick up traits during their lifetime, which means they're able to evolve during their lifetime. And the reason this is so important is because of things, they develop resistance factors. They're able to pick up genes for new toxins or genes that allow them to digest a new food source or genes, most importantly, that allow them to resist our antibiotics. So I'm going to cover each of these in more detail later. This is just an introduction. But transformation is when DNA is transferred from one organism to another as naked DNA in solution. So this actually means that this bacteria here in the upper left hand corner is actually going to just bump into DNA. Imagine if you're swimming in a pool, as gross as this might seem, swimming in a pool and there was DNA in that pool. When you bump into it, you can actually take it into your cells and incorporate it into your genome. That's exactly what happens. So, for example, let's say that an E. coli bacteria is minding its own business, swimming in a sea wherever it lives, and it bumps into a gene that allows it to resist an antibiotic or it bumps into a gene that allows it to pick up a toxin. Now this could very well be where E. coli 0157H7 came from, where uh, the E. coli bacteria, minding its own business, picked up a gene for the Shiga toxin. And now we have this toxin producing E. coli that causes problems and kills humans. So that's transformation in a nutshell. Transduction is actually going to be transferring genetic material using something, a phage. So I'll have separate videos where I cover phages. They're very important. I think that they uh, certainly can cause some problems, but I actually think they're more of a solution than a problem. So I will cover them in depth. But this would be an example of where a phage would actually go into a bacteria and do what it's supposed to do, which is to chop up the bacterial DNA, making this cell here a factory to produce more phages. And then when these phages go on to their next cell, they're actually going to be carrying some of that bacterial DNA with them. So I'll cover that all in detail later. Then we have conjugation. So conjugation is going to be how one bacteria uses a, a sex pillus or a mating bridge to physically transfer bacteria through something called a plasmid from one cell into another. So this allows populations of bacteria to evolve because if I'm a bacteria and I have a, a trait that's useful, I get to keep that trait, I get to make a copy of that trait, and I get to give it to my neighbors. So if you think about a thousand bacteria hiding under a biofilm, one of them can have a trait, a resistance factor, something that gives them a survival advantage. They can share that with all their neighbors and all thousand of them can come out of that biofilm having that trait. So those are the three main examples of horizontal gene transfer that will be covered. Transformation, naked DNA in solution. Transduction uses a phage or bacteriophage to transfer DNA from one bacteria to another. And conjugation is going to use a sex pillus or a mating bridge. And it's going to use a plasmid to transfer DNA. So there is a fourth 
uh, type of vertical gene or horizontal gene transfer that's important and worth talking about here, and that's called transposons or jumping genes. These were first found in maize uh, by a scientist named Barbara McClintock. She ended up winning uh, the Nobel Prize in 1983, I believe, for figuring out what transposons are. So these are actually genes that can jump from one region of DNA to another. So tra a transposon can jump from one part of a chromosome to another. It can jump from one chromosome to another, but probably most importantly, from an antibiotic resistance standpoint, they're able to jump from where they are in the genome into a plasmid where they can then be transferred to another organism. So those are your transposons. All right, just want to credit uh, OpenStax and Rice University for the images here, and I hope this has been a great video. Now you know more, so you can be more. Go change the world.